Over the past seven weeks, I've been working on a project for my media and technology class at the University of Cincinnati. As an inspiring commentator, I wanted to zone in on the inequalities that are so prevalent within the sports media industry affecting women. These inequalities range from gender labor divisions to unequal airtime, to receiving more online harassment and much more. With my research and the class material presented to me, I believe I found a lot of valuable info and insight on why discrimination still exists in the sports media industry. Here's what I found. We have to go back all the way to the 30s and 40s to find one of the reasons behind the discrimination. In the Birdsaw and Carmi article, we learned that women were forced to leave radio and TV industries after being accused of communism influence. While women did crucial work for organizations, they were given roles that were less amenable to career advancements. From this information, I conclude that the media industry was structured completely different for men than it was for women, as they were put at a severe disadvantage early in the 20th century. This severe disadvantage has improved a bit, but a lot of it still exists. When researching, I found an interesting study to support my claim. According to the University of Florida College of Journalism and Communication, non-athlete sources like anchors, reporters, commentators, and analysts were 80% male over the past 25 years. In other words, four or five sources were male. Few women have been lucky to land what I consider significant jobs at professional teams or a major network, but always doesn't sound so sweet. The first example I mentioned was Jenny Kavner, the play-by-play announcer for the Oakland Athletics. Jenny was hired in February 2024, making her the first female to be a primary announcer for an MLB team, which is a very significant milestone. It took fans 30 days to create a petition, calling for her to be fired and receive plenty of criticism online. The petition received over 600 signatures. Not only that, fans posted on how they prefer their former announcer, Glenn Kuyper, who was fired for using a racial slur over Jenny. Fans would rather have a racist broadcast through games than a woman. Doris Burke became the first woman to call an NBA Finals this past season, and she was met, too, with a ton of criticism online. Jenny Taff, a sideline reporter for Fox Sports, was a target of inappropriate sexual messages from people online because as a sideline reporter, who are majority female, are held to a standard of being young and attractive to the audience. The list goes on and on, but you may notice a trend here online criticism. With the recent explosion in global communication and media production, we've seen new networks emerge online, such as social media platforms. On those platforms come public spheres, spaces that permit the circulation of ideas and info. This is where people voice their opinions and attack female figures, such as the ones I listed prior. With new technology comes new consequences, with this being one of them. Not only are figures being attacked, but also are they athletes. I talked about British pole jumper Holly Bradshaw, as just before the 2012 Olympics, received harassment over her body image. Because of this, Holly would skip meals, cut portion sizes, and even switch uniforms to cover up her stomach. Holly said, I'm athletic now, but I'm so damaged from that there's no way I would ever feel comfortable to have my stomach out on TV. A study conducted revealed that during the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, female athletes received 87% of all identified abuse. These online spaces have allowed the circulation and attacking of athletes and figures, with women being more vulnerable. Discrimination occurs even in television airtime. According to a report by Wasserman, women sports received an average share of 15% of media coverage in 2022. Even with the unequal gender labor divisions, these facts show there still is unequal gender airtime within the media industry. What's ironic here would be the media assuring the fourth estate, which is holding the government accountable, ensuring checks and balances, but they don't ensure checks and balances within their own industry. With this inequality in airtime, last year's women's college basketball championship game drew more viewers than the men's, averaging nearly 19 million viewers around 4 million more than a men's game for the first time in history. The discrimination even occurs within team slash league staffing. The NFL has 15 full-time female coaches this season, the most the league has ever had, and an increase of 25% from 2021. 
The NFL also has four women officials, the most the league's ever had, with Sarah Thomas being the first woman to officiate a Super Bowl in 2021. Last year in the MLB, 43 females held coaching positions, the most in MLB history. What about Becky Hammond becoming the first female acting coach in an NBA game? Former Marlin GM Kim Ang becoming what is believed to be the first woman hired to the general manager position by any of the professional men's sports teams in North America. With these numbers seeming small, they're breaking down the barriers previously held up and are heading into a positive direction. But why were these barriers put up in the first place? Well, there are many reasons for that, but one of the reasons is because of a false consciousness, an idea that sports are male-oriented. With male athletes performing better, male sports are more entertaining, commentators and coaches should only be male, etc. The list goes on and on. That false consciousness idea is one of the reasons behind all the discrimination I talked about within this series. It's sad to witness because in reality, females excel in sports and make their product entertaining. There are so many notable figures to name and trailblazers to praise, but overall, women are athletes too. The effect all this discrimination has on females is significant. This is one reason why some young girls don't want to participate in sports or want to enter the sports media field or the industry in general. They know the industry isn't structured for their success, which can easily discourage them like it would with anyone else if all the odds were against them and face a lot of criticism online. But for trailblazers like Jenny Kavner, Caitlin Clark, Don Staley, and many more, they are inspiring the younger generation to show them it's not impossible. This is why seeing the recent success of women's sports, especially with college basketball and the WNBA is a pleasure to see because they're impacting so many people so quickly. Imagine five to 10 years down the road when the effects really start to kick in. In this situation, I get reminded of a video I watched in one of my communication courses a year ago. A person asked kids and adults, a mix of boys and girls to complete an activity. The activity is to run like a girl. The participants ran in place, kicking their feet up, swaying their arms, running like a girl is stereotyped to run. Even when the girls were asked to complete the activity, they ran like how they were stereotyped. And then the realization set in. The realization of like a girl is an insult and it's become normal in society. The connection I make is how society views women's sports beneath male sports. When you think of the word basketball, maybe LeBron James, Michael Jordan, or a favorite moment comes to mind of your favorite team. You think of the incredible rich history the sport provides. But when you hear women's basketball, many people think of it as it's not entertaining, it's not fun to watch or competitive, etc. We can change this idea of thought. It has to start with beneath that jersey lies a human. Oh, but they're not good. Well, maybe because women athletes don't have the opportunities male athletes have or how genetics are different, etc. It's about equality. We live in the land of the free, but silently support discrimination and inequality. I'm sure if it affected you personally, you would be fighting for equality. Why can't we create a society in which women thrive in sports? It's time to put the old stereotype of sports are only for men to rest. What is there to gain from that? Nothing. I've experienced a lot of the inequality firsthand. I play pickup basketball quite a bit, and as I enter my third year, I played five on five basketball with a female on the court three times. Three times, and I enter my third year. What about the student media organization I'm in? I've only heard two females call a game, as most broadcasters in the club are male. There are plenty of examples of the effects of inequality in sports and the impact of it in our everyday lives. We just don't realize it. Now, I do want to take some time to reflect on the past seven weeks. Uh, at first, I really seemed intimidated by this project. I could have decided to explore anything, but I chose something close to me. Growing up, I played five different sports and currently am an inspiring sports broadcaster. I've known about the inequality in the industry. I've seen the inequality firsthand. With the course material provided, I felt like I made great connections with my controversy, and it opened up a new way of thinking for me in this topic. 
I want to thank Professor Jennings for the opportunity to do this fun project and providing feedback. I'm really proud of how this project has turned out. This project challenged me to think critically and allowed me to research interesting topics and concerns. I truly hope this project creates awareness for the inequalities the industry suffers from. Thank you.